Hello lovelies, how are you all doing today? I do hope you're well. I'm a little bit excited today for a number of reasons. One, I've got my window open for the first time this year. We actually have some sunshine and warmth and goodness me what a difference it it makes it feels oh finally so hopefully that bit of warmth everything that's already sown and in the ground will start to get away now <laughs> although it does remind me how late in the season it is for a lot of things that I still haven't done yet never mind I'm excited about that I'm excited by the fact that I've brought some more seedlings down today and I think I've got three more days of trips down here with a couple of bags of seedlings and then they're all done hallelujah oh my goodness on that oh i'm sweating already goodness me so on that note today i've brought my celery and i thought i'd just very quickly show you and tell you especially for those of you who are trying it this year for the first time and are a little bit scared about them so here's one of them See, it's such a little dinky dot. <laughs> I mean, it's so right. Who's making all that noise out there? <sighs> That's really low and loud, isn't it? Is that a jellycopter? Go away. Anyway, I'm not going to explore my excitement. Yeah, I mean, they are such a fragile little things at this stage. They were pricked out about a month ago when there was one two leaf. <laughs> it now has three two leaves. But you can see, I mean, they're incredibly spindly and fragile looking. And the first year I grew them, I thought, oh my goodness, they're not going to come to anything. They're not growing, they're not doing anything. It was a real kind of test of nerve in a way. So now that they're down in the garden, um, they will, they need to go in the cold frame overnight. I'm not gonna put them in there just yet because the sun is really strong and I think it will fry them if I put them in there now. I think they need to go in there, but maybe with a bit of shade cloth. Anyway, the point is, yeah, they look really, sorry I knocked you then, really pathetic and spindly at the moment. The first year I grew them I thought nothing is going to happen. Got them into the ground and then really quickly, you know, within a couple of weeks or so they put up more leaves, they just kind of bulked up and looked like, ah, oh, they're going to do something. Which if you've been watching my videos for any time you'll know they do do something. They turn into monsters. Um, I've just literally had last year's out, bar one, for seed saving. So yeah, brilliant. We've got sunshine. I've only got three more days of bringing plants to the garden. Hallelujah. But what I'm really excited about is I'm right on the cusp of my first harvest of this season. Now, back at the beginning of April... Um, obviously I've missed the whole of March in the garden but in that first week or so of April I did a bit of a rescue harvest amongst the brassicas so the curly kale, the purple sprouting broccoli and the carolo nero so I harvested what I could that hadn't already blown loved it, ate loads fresh over the course of a week froze quite a bit which is now all gone, I've scoffed it all and also in that first week, two weeks of April, I removed the chard and the spinach, again from last year, to make that bed ready for the carrots. I had a load of leaves from that as well. Again, another week of eating, a ton of them fresh. The rest went into the freezer. They all have gone now too. So really, by the time I do this harvest, I'll tell you about it in a second, um, it will probably be in to say the second week of June so it will have been two months since I had any fresh food obviously in that two months I've been living on the food I have stored in the freezer some food stored dried like some beans the squash just store in the air 
the last, the very last of my onions, they're now all in the bottom of the fridge. A couple of the red ones have tried to sprout, so any that are showing signs of wanting to sprout, I'll quickly chop them up and whack them in the freezer. But yeah, basically, um, no fresh food for two months, No, not, nothing in the garden for me to pick and take home and enjoy. Oh, apart from rhubarb, I've been having rhubarb. So yeah, it's always a really exciting moment. The harvest I'm talking about is my first broad beans. Oh, let's go into the garden. I want to show them to you. I want to talk about why I grow them the way I do. Plus, I've got a little bit of a problem with them that I need to start to get on top of. But come on, let's go and check them out. First of all, I want to give you an idea of the uh, scale, size of them. What's that always the builders? Look at that, they're up to my hip. They're getting on for, they're a metre. They're certainly over three feet. The direct zone ones, the cell zone ones, they're about a foot behind. <sighs> Gorgeous. Coming closer, let's have a chat. Wow, it really is bright this morning. <laughs> I'll be squinting. Uh, I'm not complaining. Okay, so variety, first of all. This is a mixture because I got my saved seed in a mix. It's a mix of Claudia Aquadulci, which is a real bog standard autumn sown broad bean. Claudia Aquadulci and then Aquadulci Super. So you can tell from the names, same family. The Super, the pods just came a bit longer. I always sow my broad beans in the autumn for two quite specific reasons one of which is really really important for the sort of as close to self-sufficient gardener as you can possibly get in a small space um, that first reason is because as you can see right now I'm on the cusp of harvesting I'll show you some of the pods down below in a second but yeah I'm right on the cusp of harvesting by by getting them going in the autumn I can get a harvest. In previous years I've actually done the harvest right at the end of May. I think this year it's going to be more like the middle of June just because we've had we've had quite a cold month um, of May. But yeah, getting that early harvest is really really important because I get the harvest, get the veggies, get these plants out and then I can put a second crop in this bed. You know a lot of people will look at my garden and say wow it's a really big garden and it is big to manage when I'm trying to do it all in one month but actually for self-sufficiency it's actually not a big garden so any bed that I can get two crops out of in one season is a huge deal it's a really big deal uh, to me likewise when I take the garlic out brassicas and things will go in brilliant so yeah, it's for me it's a no-brainer to start them in the autumn um, and get that harvest in end of May, beginning of June. So these were all sown in, I think it was the second week of October. So October, the first couple of weeks of October is ideal because it gives the seeds a plant, the seeds a chance to germinate while there's still a little bit of warmth in the soil get them germinated, get them going a bit before the winter sets in. I cover them with fleece, not fleece, I beg your pardon, I cover them with my EnviroMesh tunnels just to give them a little bit of protection from the really, really cold winds. But they are a winter hardy plant, so unless we were going to minus five for days and days and weeks and weeks on end, they should do okay, but that little bit of protection from the EnviroMesh to keep the really cold wind off them. So that's beginning of October. You could also sow them in the spring. The ideal time would be March, just into April as well. Um, again, 
for a summer harvest and just enough time hopefully after they're out at the end of the summer to maybe squeeze something in like a winter brassica if you started those in pots um, but yeah I'm a huge fan of the autumn sowing in order to get two crops out of this bed but also for another really important reason which I've spotted and it's a pest issue I'm just starting to get some black fly in the very, very tips, in the very growing tips. Let me pinch this one out to show you. I keep hearing things clatter banging. I think it's builders all around. Can you see? If you can see right, right in here, yucky black fly. The easiest way to do it, so the, the black fly really attacked attracted to these very tender juicy growing tips so one of the other reasons for doing an autumn sowing is I can go around and nip out all the tops of my plants my pods are all set they're just growing and fattening up the pods are done I don't need the plants to grow any taller so I can nip their tops out without hurting the plant without sort of stunting the plant so yeah I can go around and nip them all out like that by the way, if I was to wash off all this black fly, these tips are beautiful to eat, either raw in a salad, but I really like them just very lightly steamed, and then a bit of a drizzle of olive oil, maybe a little bit of garlic, gorgeous. The reason I'm mentioning this with autumn sowings is because if you've done a spring sowing, I did do a spring sowing one year, Oh, eight, nine years ago, just as an experiment. The fact is, well, you've seen today, my plants are three foot high and more. By the time the black fly come, which is usually at the beginning of May, I think again, they're late this year because we've been cold. But by the time they come at the beginning of May, if I've done spring sowings, my plants are only about this big. So if I nip the top out, I'm actually nipping away half nearly all the plant in some cases before they've had a chance to make their flowers or anything so the nipping out for spring sown broad beans I don't think is a great idea there is something we can do though if if your plants are minuscule still and you don't you know if they're not at the stage that mine are at if you've got a spring sowing um, fear not there is an answer the answer lies in one of my other beds over there. It's something I need to dig up. So let's do that. Let me ha give you a quick look at um, how these pods are forming before we go over to the other side of the garden. It's so lovely to see such a lush, bushy site anyway. But this is what's really happy making. Beautiful, beautiful pods. Now some of them, these, like I say, it's all a bit late this year, I think it's been so cold. But at this stage, when they're so tiny, the beans have hardly formed in there, you can actually have these off and eat the whole pod. What I'm after though is the beans inside, and by the time the beans are big enough inside, those pods will have become tough and bitter and horrid. But yeah, there's, there's plenty going on. Oh, I can't wait. I love this moment each year. It is, generally speaking, well, it's always the first big pick of the year. And it's, they are really starting to drip with pods now. Oh, look at that. Look, podtastic. Gorgeous. So, yeah, I reckon another couple of weeks, let the pods these bottom ones anyway start to really fatten up and I'll be having them away one thing that I am thinking now though is we are about to be quite warm and dry or oh, how are the cell sown ones doing in terms of podding up actually the cell sown ones look at all that black fly so the black fly looks worse on the cell sown than on the direct sown well oh, that's one more reason to direct so if you can keep the mice off. Yeah, there are pods coming on these as well. Fab. Yeah, what I was just about to say was that we are 
we are now going to be warm and dry so I will be making sure that I water all these plants because they need that water to um, plump up the pardage, plump up the pardage. <laughs> right, now let's go over to the side of the garden to get the black fly cure. I've come to the garlic bed. Now, I think my garlic looked pretty shoddy this year. Do you mind being quiet, please, sir? <laughs> yeah, I think they're looking pretty, oh, I don't know, not much faith. But I want to do one of two things today. How serendipitous. I want to direct sow some beans here. That'll be part of my bean arches. This last row of one, two, three, four garlic are in the way. So I'm gonna have them out. It's a little bit early to harvest them for having them for storing, for eating. But this garlic, I'm not gonna eat. This garlic is gonna be my black fly um, deterrent, slaughterer, whatever. So yeah, let's just have, oh my goodness, that ground. Despite all the rain, flipping giant blocks with his hammer, um, yeah, despite all the rain, it is moist down there, but the ground is pretty compact. Actually, you know what? That don't look too bad. In fact, that looks pretty gorgeous. Ooh, lovely kind of colour combo with my top. Oh, I just saw out the corner of my eye and I saw Rusty. I thought he was crouching for a poop. I was going to say, don't you dare, puss. Right, let's get the other three out. And then this little space is then clear for beans. I don't want to disturb the, um, the ones that are still in. So that's why I'm looking a little bit um, uncoordinated about it. Wow, this ground is wet. <coughs> Just something to... <coughs> They're going to irritate me today, aren't they? Um, something to bear in mind when it's this wet with the garlic. If, if the forecast was... I'm going to have to come right in close to you to talk, aren't I? Because they're being so noisy. Can I tip you up? There we go. Light's right behind me. Never mind. Um, <coughs> I've breathed in a bit of um, soil. If we were forecast rain throughout the whole of June, I don't think we are. But if we were, I would be very tempted to get all of my garlic out now because I do get white rot on this site. I usually lift my garlic, it's sort of around about the beginning of June to the middle of June. Everything, I think everything's a bit... Seriously guys, is that going to happen all day? They're working, they're employed, that's good. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's always a kind of that thing of, I want to leave them in the ground long enough to fatten up, but I don't want them to be sitting in moist soil because they'll rot. So, having seen these I've pulled out today, I actually may well, Oh, I'm in a dilemma. I think I'm gonna leave it two more weeks. So we've got two dry weeks coming, that's great. And then I think I'll say, nah, that's it. I'm not gonna risk it any longer. Or, the other thing I might do is have intermittent ones out over the next few days, just to keep an eye on them. And if I see any specks of that little bit of white on the bottoms, which is the white rust starting, have the lot out. But anyway, never mind the garlic. It's not a garlic harvesting day, although actually that's plenty for me to do my black fly cure and for me to eat. I didn't know I was going to be harvesting today. 
Yay! Right, I think we're gonna have to go back in the shed. Hang on a tip. <sighs> I can't get over the weather. Ah! Oh my goodness, it's so exciting. Right, <laughs> before I get like completely doolally on excitement. Black fly spray. So what I will do with my, it's such a pretty one, isn't it? This may be, because all my garlic, it's just my own garlic that I save a few bulbs each year to spit into cloves to grow again. So I'm wondering if this is one of the ones that originated from the beautiful, the garlic violette I brought back from Nice in the summer of 2017. Gosh, it's a long time ago. Anyway, gorgeous, isn't it? Let's pop that down for a minute. So all I will do is, <clears throat> I'll take this home with me this evening, today. Uh, this evening I'll use maybe two or three cloves, not from that one, that's gorgeous. I'll show you another one in a minute because I think I've spotted something. Um, but yeah, two or three cloves. I might very slightly squash them, sort of spit them a bit. Pour on, not boiling, but just off the boil water, some hot water, and let them steep all night. So maybe half a pint to a pint of water, about a pint of water. Let them steep, 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 steep overnight and then tomorrow morning, it'll be cool by then, I'll strain that liquid off into my little, <laughs> look I think it's supposed to be for a hair salon, <laughs> my little spritzing bottle <clears throat> and then quite simply I'm going to spritz the heck out of those little black fly. Part of this, this I don't know why it works, but it does. Um, I don't use it very often in the garden, but there always seems to be sort of like two seasons with the black fly. Quite early on, I'm thinking about my climbing beans in particular now because I don't nip. Quite often you'll get the black fly all up and down the plants. So there's nothing you can nip out to solve the problem. So, um, why I generally do is I'll spray it on the plant, but I'll also rub my fingers up and down the area to sort of slightly squish them. So I don't know if later on, if the smell puts them off any more coming in. Um, I don't know if it partly it drowns them. Like I say, I don't know how it works. All I know is it works. I've been doing it for years and it seems like a really good, um, you know, way of dealing with a pest without resorting to some really nasty chemicals. You know, I'm making my own chemical from produce in the garden. It's well, it's not going to cost me anything except for the price of boiling the kettle. I don't even necessarily need to boil the kettle just from the hot tap, but then it's still costing me with the boiler, isn't it? You know what I mean. It's going to be a virtually free solution. Now, just quickly, this is another of the garlic. Hang on, let me rub some of the soil off. I don't, I don't know if this is going to pick up on camera. I hope it will. Ah, oh, yeah, it will. Can you see those little white spots? Yep. That's the beginning of the dreaded white rot. Now, at this stage, is just very much on the surface. It's in the soil and on the surface. So at this stage, I can rub that off, get the, clo get the bulbs dried, and they will be okay. They'll be okay for eating, they'll be okay for storing. I'm really glad I had a closer look because I think that's telling me, well, it's first it's telling me we've had a very, very wet month. And obviously my soil is not ideal for garlic growing. Generally, you want a much lighter, sandier, free draining soil. Oh, the smell. I just got a whiff of it then. That's strong garlic. Small but mighty. Yeah, so I have completely the wrong soil for growing garlic on. Does that stop me? Heck no. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to risk the rest of the crop. It was not on my agenda to do, but over the coming days, I'm going to have the whole crop out. If I leave it, that rot is going to get into the bulbs and just ruin them all. So yeah, just like... It's like I was saying the other day about my under sink fiasco, which now I still haven't fixed. It's like I just, I would just like one day where I don't have to try and fix something else into that day. Um, 
but yeah it looks like I'm gonna have to fit the garlic harvest in sometime in the next couple of days oh woe is me harvesting yay right um what's next today that oh my tummy just did a massive rumble the end where I've just taken the garlic out it's really lumpy and solid so I'm just going to go and break that down a little bit I have got a bit of compost I can add because I want to get some I'm going to do it today or not. I would like to direct so a few beans at least. Let me go and have a look and assess. A look at my watch, not that I ever wear a watch. And just think about what else I need to do today and see if I can actually fit that in. Yeah, I'm going to go and have a little look. Actually, there is something I would like to show you before I think about doing any um, climbing beans direct. If I, if I do them, it'll be along here and here where these beds are pretty much prepped. Yeah, I got these done the other day. Oh my goodness, I'm, I am so behind this year and I'm really struggling to get all my beds ready. But I'm getting there. I am getting there and I'm keeping the faith. But never mind that, what I wanted to show you today, because they're at their best at the moment. Obviously, you've seen my little patch of poached egg plants. Oh, I keep forgetting to check on the tree lily how tall or not it is. I wonder if that one would like to be to the side of my sign. Let's have a look. Oh, it's right. Oh, it's right on the cusp. No, I think looking at it from that angle, I think it wants to be on the back side. Anyway, that's not why we're here. So, these lovely little poached egg, Limnanthes douglasii, if you want to look them up. They came from Catherine's plot, just across the path from me. Let me show you how they look in her garden. Oh, feast your eyes on this lot. Isn't that the gladdest sight ever? So beautiful, swathes and swathes of them. So obviously these, you can see they self seed like mad and they're all across her plot. I mean, they're literally everywhere, even down this end. So what she does, she lets them look and sort of forget me nots and nigella. I have nigella everywhere too. Another heavy self seeder. Yeah, what she does is she just lets them do their own thing. Oh, now these forget-me-nots in a slightly shady area. So pretty, aren't they? Yeah, she lets them get on with it, do their own thing, grow wherever they want to. Um, and then when she needs space for planting, she literally just yanks them out by the handful. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. I absolutely adore how her plot looks. It's so beautiful. So pretty. So you might think, why don't I do similar on my plot in terms of letting them sort of go wild and rampant? Well, the fact is, oh, this bed is so pretty. Oh, I might top up her bird bath for her. It's empty. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. I love to come and look at it, but it's, um, <laughs> well, I, for me I can't cope because you know how I need sort of straight lines. It's just my OCD, it's partly, you know what, it's also partly a dyspraxia thing, this need for lines and edges and clarity. But you know what, I've got this right opposite my plot for me to enjoy every time I come to the garden and any time I want a little break. So yeah, in terms of spacing, look, see there's my plot. Here's Catherine's gorgeousness. Oh, so pretty, so pretty. Looks like a couple of calendula have already um, flowered. Wow. Right, I need to go and think about my own plot and the work I would like to get done 
today and when I finished I can come back over here and just oh, lose myself in all of Catherine's flowers again. Oh good grief, I'm going to call it quits for filming today because not only that house, there's another one here that's just kicked off as well. I think they're having some kind of patio laid and it's the angle grinder cutting the beautiful York flagstones. Um, so yeah, I don't stand a chance. Never mind. I'm going to get out there, get on with things and I'm just trying to think. We're heading towards the end of the month, aren't we? So I think probably next time you see me in the garden, it will be for the June tour. And it's certainly not going to look like the beginning of June when we see it. It's probably going to look more like the beginning of May. Never mind. <laughs> As I am wont to say. All right, lovelies. I'll see you all again soon. I'll see you indoors in the next couple of days. Back out here at the beginning of June. So until then, please make the most of any half decent weather you've got. Just make the most of your outdoor space. We are lucky to have these spaces, aren't we? Even if they are hard work at this time of year. The hard work equals wonderful rewards later on. And the first broad beans very, very soon. Cheerio, everybody. Please look after yourselves and each other and your broad beans. Bye for now.